it's one of the most popular assault rifles in the world. Even after 70 years, it still poses a significant threat to anyone who crosses it. It has become a cultural icon, a symbol, a source of pride. It is one of the most influential inventions to ever come out of the 20th century, and its design has stood the test of time. I am talking, of course, about the history of the AK-47. It is a rifle that has its share of limitations, though many say none compare with the original. The Soviets put it on a coin and other nations have had it on their coats of arms. The nation of Mozambique as well as the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah even went so far as to put it on their flags. It is a symbol of armed resistance and liberation. Now, the Avtomat Kalashnikov model of 1947, more commonly known as the AK-47, the Kalashnikov or simply the Kalash, is a weapon which all combat soldiers love. It was developed in secrecy by the Soviet Union during the beginning of the Cold War. It shoots whether it is covered in sand, mud, rain or blood. It doesn't overheat, it doesn't break and it doesn't jam. The AK-47 is the invention of a Russian tank mechanic. Its origins though harken back to the Second World War. Now, the German Blitz of 1939 and 1940 forced the opposing nations to rethink their tactics, as well as the place of the rifleman in battle. The famed trenches of World War I were all but obsolete. This was a new time, a new era, where firing a well-aimed and well-timed shot from a fixed position had become a thing of the past. The distances between a soldier and his enemy were growing shorter so there was no longer a real need for a battle rifle which could fire large caliber bullets at long range targets. That philosophy may still hold true for snipers and marksmen, but not for the common foot soldier. This was a new kind of battlefield, a much smaller one, and the rifleman was now a lot more mobile and a lot closer to his enemies. A new kind of weapon was necessary to facilitate this dramatic shift in war doctrine. There was a need for a new deadly weapon, as lethal as the battle rifle, but that was designed for short to mid-range targets. True, there were different kinds of submachine guns available at the time, but they had relatively small calibers and were not accurate enough. Furthermore, it wasn't practical for every single infantry soldier to carry a submachine gun, spare ammo, accompanying equipment and personal gear. Providing the individual soldier with a new kind of rifle with lethal short to mid-range firepower was something the Germans saw as a top priority. They were the first to recognize the need for such a weapon and they went to work on developing it. Nothing beats German quality engineering, hey? The outcome of the effort was the German 7.92 by 33mm cartridge. This cartridge is one which began a revolution in small arms. It enabled the German infantry to use a more compact rifle, carry more ammo, concentrate firepower and improve the controllability of the weapon during automatic fire. In 1943, the German assault rifle, the Sturmgewehr, also known as the STG-44, was introduced. It was the first of its kind and it is considered to be the first modern assault rifle. It was safer, simpler and easier to operate than any submachine gun that was being used at the time. Two years later, the war was over. The STG-44 didn't get to experience wide distribution, but it was sent to the Eastern Front. The Soviets were very impressed and taken by the new weapon. One Soviet soldier in particular, a man by the name of Mikhail Kalashnikov, was especially interested in the STG-44. Mikhail Timofeyevich Kalashnikov joined the Soviet army in 1938. He began his service as part of the armored corps and threw himself into the machinery of tanks. As a boy, Kalashnikov loved taking things apart to see how they worked. He was always fascinated by machinery and engineering, but living in a small village, Mikhail had no way of obtaining a formal or even informal education in it. The military provided him with the chance to indulge his passions and his technical side. Now, Kalashnikov designed an engine part which impressed high-ranking officers, so his superiors scheduled a meeting between the young soldier and the general Grigory Zhukov, who would later lead the Red Army to victory over Nazi Germany. Following the meeting, Kalashnikov was sent to the Technical Armory School in Kiev. While his schooling was going on, Kalashnikov managed to improve on his design and created two more models of the same instrument. Kalashnikov's studies were cut short, however, due to the outbreak of war. In June 1941, Germany launched Operation Barbarossa. 
The Nazis invaded the Soviet Union, catching the Russians somewhat unprepared. It was the largest military operation of World War II. Hitler had always regarded the 1939 non-aggression pact as a temporary state, a treaty signed for tactical purposes and nothing more. Once the treaty had served its purpose and there was no longer a need to uphold it. Kalashnikov, who held the rank of senior sergeant, was given command of a tank and sent to the front. A few months later, in September of that same year, Kalashnikov was seriously wounded in combat. While he was recuperating at a hospital, he heard first-hand stories and tales of Russian infantrymen being overwhelmed and outgunned by Germany's immense firepower. Vladimir Grigorovich Fedorodov was a lieutenant general and weapons designer. Kalashnikov was very influenced by his work and he began researching the development of small arms. Now Kalashnikov was always something of an autodidact and he learned the intricacies of gun design. In 1942 Kalashnikov was on convalescent leave in Kazakhstan. He entered a military sponsored competition for a new machine pistol. He had help in the form of a local railway depot and its workers who provided some assistance. Three months later, Kalashnikov designed and produced a working prototype. Now, the Soviet army rejected his submission in favor of another weapon, but Kalashnikov's efforts were not in vain. The military was impressed with Kalashnikov's abilities, and Mikhail was removed from the armored corps and transferred to the main Soviet small arms facility in the city of Ensk. While in Ensk, Kalashnikov discovered that the Soviets had also shortened their cartridges, much like the Germans did some time before. The new caliber was 7.62 by 39mm, and it was very similar to the German predecessor. In 1944, Kalashnikov began working on a gas-operated selective fire carbine chambered for the new 1943 round. Tests were favorable and the ideas were well received by his superiors. But the weapon that was chosen for continued development was a different semi-automatic carbine, the SKS, created by a senior weapons designer and inventor of the name Sergei Simorov. In 1945, the SKS was put into service in the Soviet army, but it was a rifle which related to an older doctrine of war, one which was rapidly being phased out in favor of new ideas and philosophies. Mechanical warfare was evolving quickly, and the new battlefield, which put a lot more emphasis on speed and automatic firepower, was not fully compatible with the SKS. However, for the time being, Kalashnikov's design was put on hold. Now, during the period between 1945 and 1946, Kalashnikov kept working on his 7.62mm prototype. Unlike his time spent in Kazakhstan, this work was done with the support of a fully trained and highly qualified team of technicians and engineers, whom assisted in the development of the weapon. Kalashnikov even brought in his wife, Ekaterina, a skilled technical illustrator, in on the project. Kalashnikov had seen combat as a tank commander and he knew what the common soldier needs in combat and which features would be most useful to a rifleman. The two key attributes were compactness and reliability. Kalashnikov also insisted that the weapon be simple. In an interview given in Russia in 1997, Kalashnikov cited a passage he'd read in a book. All that is complex is not useful, and all that is useful is simple. In 1946, a new and improved design was approved for further testing by the military. One year later, it was officially titled the Kalashnikov Avtomat model of 1947. It became the prototype for all future Russian small arms. While most other weapon designers sought to tighten the inner workings of the rifle, Kalashnikov went entirely in another direction. He gave the inner moving parts a lot more freedom of movement, and it is precisely because of that freedom that you are able to take a handful of sand, throw it in the rifle, retract the bolt, and it just keeps on firing. In 1949, the Soviets began the production of the AK-47 in secret. It was produced at a weapons factory located in the city of Izensk. Izensk had served as a supplier to the Russian army since the time of the Tsar. Throughout the 1950s, the AK-47 became the frontline Soviet infantry weapon. Even though the factory had some setbacks, production kept on going. Secrecy was carried out by the soldiers themselves. When firing the rifle and training with it, every single bullet case had to be picked up when being transported. The AK-47 was covered in a pouch. The Soviets did not want anyone to know of its existence and their plan held up until the Hungarian Revolt in 1956. In 1959, 
the new version of the AK-47, the AKM, was presented. It was a modernized version of the AK-47 and it was the model which was most widely exported. Welding problems were solved by newer technology, receiver issues were fixed by reinforcing the metal and a weapon was a lot lighter and more affordable. In the 1960s, the AKM could be seen popping up in various communist nations, especially China. Hundreds of thousands of AKs were already in the hands of friendly and less friendly countries. The 1960s were a time of great political struggles and revolutions in many locations. In Vietnam, the Viet Cong armed themselves with leftover weaponry from World War II, as well as weapons taken from South Vietnamese soldiers and the US advisors. Sweet, now some technical specifications. The Kalashnikov is a unique design of steel and wood. It weighs in at 3.49 kilograms without a magazine. Magazines are made of steel, plastic or alloy. They weigh in at 0.33 kilograms, 0.25 kilograms and 0.17 kilograms respectively. The AK-47's overall length is 88.9 centimeters with a fixed stock, 87.3 centimeters with a folding extended stock, or 64.5 cm with a folded stock. The barrel is 41.4 cm long, of which 36.8 cm of the barrel is rifled. It is a gas-operated rotating bolt rifle. It has a muzzle velocity of 715 meters per second and an effective range of up to 347 meters. On semi-automatic mode, it has a rate of fire of 40 rounds per minute. Full automatic mode will give you 100 rounds per minute. Now, the original AK-47 magazine had 30 rounds. It was based on the magazine round count that the US demanded, a higher volume magazine for the M16s in Vietnam. Other volumes include 5, 10, 20 and 40 round magazines as well as 75 and 100 round drum magazines. Over 100 million units of the AK-47 and its variants have legally been sold or been used in over 106 countries since 1949. This got the AK-47 into the Guinness Book of World Records. Now even with its popularity, Mikhail Kalashnikov was not a very rich man. He did not make much profit even though his weapon was and still is in very high circulation. Mikhail Kalashnikov was a beloved figure, humble and down to earth. He was revered by his contemporaries, colleagues and fellow Russians. In 1997, President Boris Yeltsin promoted Kalashnikov to the rank of Major General and awarded him with a decoration for special services for the motherland. In some parts of the world, you can actually buy an AK-47 for as low as $10. Because of its relatively low price, the AK-47 has become a favorite amongst gangsters and terrorists alike. It is a symbol of ethnic and tribal violence, which is very prevalent in Africa. The Kalashnikov rifle and its variants are used to kill approximately 250,000 fucking people every year. They have caused more deaths than any military firearm, airstrike or rocket attack combined. The AK-47 has without a doubt changed the world of modern warfare. It changed the way we do battle. Today its original design continues to serve as the basis for many different weapons. License for production and distribution has been given to over 30 countries with many more countries using the AK and its variants. Kalashnikov never forgot his roots. He didn't consider the countless awards and honors he would received to be anything special. Even at a later age, he continued to stay up to date with the different improvements and modifications which were being planned and executed. He always stated that he is a simple man, and he said he'd want to be remembered as one who had worked hard for the motherland. Kalashnikov died on the 23rd of December in 2013 at the age of 94 in a hospital in Ivzensk from a gastric hemorrhage. In January 2014, a letter that Kalashnikov wrote six months before his death to the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Kirill, was published by the Russian daily newspaper Ivestia. In the letter, he stated that he was suffering spiritual pain about whether he was responsible for the deaths caused by the weapons he had created. Translated from the published letter, he states, My heartache. Unbearable, same insoluble question. If my rifle deprived people of life, and therefore I, Mikhail Kalashnikov, 93 years old and son of a peasant and Orthodox Christian according to his faith, am responsible for the death of people, let even an enemy. 
The patriarch wrote back, thanked Kalashnikov and said that he was an example of patriotism and a correct attitude towards the country. Kirill added to the responsibility for the deaths by the rifle, the church has a well-defined position when the weapon is used in defense of the motherland. The church supports its creators and the military which use it. He became one of the first people to be buried in the Federal Military Memorial Cemetery. Well guys, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop us a like and maybe even subscribe. Until next time guys, take care of yourselves and have a chilled one.